remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, for in six days the Lord made the heaven and the earth, the sea and all that's in them, and he rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. When I was in my early 20s, I worked as a carpenter. Once, on a kitchen remodeling job, I stood on a ladder with a 20-ounce framing hammer, trying to pull out a nail from an awkward space over my head. The nail wasn't budging, so I gave it a big yank. Instead of the nail pulling loose, it snapped in half, and I hit myself in the mouth with the hammer. The hammer broke my front teeth and cut through my lip and my mouth. It's hard to describe how much it hurt. I went to the dentist and he repaired my broken teeth and he sewed up the inside of my lip. Well, three days later, I was working on the same job on the same ladder in the same kitchen. This time, I was using a pair of vice grip pliers to work off the outer jacket of some armored wire. And that was above me. When I pulled with all my strength on the wire, the pliers broke loose and I hit myself in the mouth, tearing through the stitches and re-breaking my teeth. I dropped to the floor holding my bleeding mouth and I cried like a baby. I'd managed to knock out my teeth twice in the same week. There are sayings about tripping over the same stone twice. Backing away from what you're working on is a lesson that I had to learn more than once. Throughout history, one of the lessons we seem to need to learn over and over is that we can't seem to get enough of anything. Although we're the richest society that's ever existed, most of us want more money. We live longer than any group of people ever has, and yet we don't seem to have enough time for friends and family or to get the things done that really matter. We can have a three minute egg in 30 seconds and find the answer to a question instantly and yet we feel frustrated. We have access to food, security, and physical comforts that were science fiction a few decades ago. Yet I can't tell you the number of folks that I've met who are unhappy. What's wrong? Why aren't we content with what we have? Is the answer to life just faster computers, stronger medicines, and more money? There's something missing from our lives. As a third year medical student, I learned a lesson about what happens when things go missing. We were starting our clinical rotations and six of us stood around an illuminated x-ray screen, ready for our first lesson in radiology. While we stared at a front and side view of a chest x-ray, a radiologist asked us if we saw anything amiss. We were quiet. Well, if you don't see anything wrong, does anybody care to comment on what's right? Still more quiet. Okay, let's start with the basics. Who can tell me the gender of the patient? And so it began. He was teaching us the fundamentals of reading an x-ray. Turns out our patient was a woman, 20 to 40 years of age. The diaphragms were normal, the heart wasn't enlarged, We couldn't see any infections in the lungs. We couldn't see any tumors. After a half an hour of tutelage, we were really getting the hang of radiology. Then our professor began with some less obvious questions. 
Has she ever had any chest trauma? Vacant stares. Does she have a partially collapsed lung? Oops, we'd forgotten to look for that. We were asked to consider more subtle matters. Is she right or left-handed? What kind of work does she do? I guess there was a reason that this guy was in charge of the department. We went round and around, and we looked at every single structure multiple times. And finally, the x-ray held no secrets. Is there anything else, or did we get it all, the radiologist asked. An hour's worth of looking had confirmed what our textbook said was the hardest kind of x-ray to be 100% certain of, a normal one. Well, then our mentor said, the film was read by the doctor in charge of the emergency department last night, and the radiology resident on call last night, and the one this morning, and they agreed with you. But I called the patient to tell her I think she has cancer. Well, we went back to looking again, but no matter how hard we tried, we couldn't spot anything on the film that didn't belong. I'll give you a hint, he said. It's not something there, but something missing that bothers me. Well, even with this clue, we came up blank. We pointed to one thing and then another, but each time the radiologist would shake his head. Finally, he asked, where's the left clavicle? Where was the left clavicle? It had been eaten away by cancer. The take home point, something that's missing is hard to see. And what's missing from our lives is a rhythm that's been established for thousands upon thousands of years, a rhythm of stopping all commerce and work one day out of seven. What's missing is a day of rest when we make time to hear the voice of God. As a doctor, I routinely worked a ridiculous number of hours, but you don't have to go to medical school to feel like your life's out of control. Whether you're a doctor or a lawyer or a college student, most of us today work too much. And we don't just work at one thing at a time anymore. We drink coffee and drive cars. We drive cars and talk on the phone. We talk on the phone and shop on the net, fix dinner and watch the news. In the last 20 years, work is up 15% and leisure is down 30. Yet those statistics don't even take into account the multitasking that we're doing all the time. Despite speed dialing, fast food, and time-saving gadgets, most of us are busier than ever. There aren't enough hours in the day is a common complaint. If my life of over 50 years has one lesson to teach, it's this. One more time-saving device is not going to give us more time. A day of rest is something that until now has been faithfully passed along generation upon generation. But it's like the radiologist lesson. It's hard to see something that isn't there. Just a few decades ago, almost everything in society stopped one day a week. Businesses closed at nights and on Sundays. No more now. Now we go 24 seven. And then the change to a 24 seven world Something like the clavicle and the x-ray has gone missing. What went missing wasn't the average Monday, it was Sunday. For most of us, Sunday was stop day. Sunday was the day when businesses closed and people got dressed and went to church. Those without a particular religious conviction simply took the day off. Jews mark Saturday as a holy day and the Adventists did likewise. But irrespective of their faith, society was given and even guaranteed a day of rest each week. Now, no more. Subtracting a day of rest each week has had a profound effect on our lives. How could it not? One day a week adds 52 days a year times an average life is equal to more than 11 years. Take away 11 years of anything from someone's life work, education, or rest, and the entire character of one's existence is altered. Multiply 11 years times a third of a billion Americans, 
and you're looking for a lost continent of time. Maybe that's why society is feeling anxious, why we're all a little restless. Well, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. If there's going to be any hope of regaining a happier, healthier life, we must first admit that something's wrong, something's missing. I can give you a prescription to treat terminal busyness, but you can't get it in a drugstore or online. If it seems like there aren't enough hours in your day, instead of working harder, smarter, or longer, you should follow God's example and simply stop one day out of seven. <laughs>